Hey guys, how are you guys doing? It feels like the last time I saw you was two months ago. Yeah. To be honest, the reason was that we went away and then we came back and then I went away again with a friend. Not complaining, it's been great, but focus hasn't been there. So this month, I really did sit down and focus a lot because there was so much I had to get done and I was kind of suffering from FOMO in terms of like getting my work done. But yeah, the holidaying, oh, had such a blast. We went to the Karoo. My most favorite day was the day that we actually hiked to a cave. But because it's been raining so much in South Africa, the river had obviously risen. And we had to cross this river a few times. At some point, I actually took out my camera. I kind of caught the clip at the right time because my dad was kind of stumbling around and my man was kind of stumbling around. It was really funny. And um, after I took the clip, I was actually waist deep in water. I'm not afraid of water, so that was totally fine. I would probably have really hurt myself if I walked across the rocks because I don't really have such good balance. I was hugging rocks in the water, pulling myself across, which seemed to definitely work in my favor. So that was fun. Then came back, did some work, and then we went to Mahubis Kluif. One of the coolest things we did was to go and have a look at the tallest tree in Africa, which was planted, so it's not natural. This tree was over a hundred meters tall. It was insane. We had a little bit of a debate going around about how did they measure the length of the tree. There were theories thrown around such as lasers were used and I was like, no man. People were in helicopters dropping ropes out of the helicopters and then, you know, letting the rope drop to the ground and then pulling it up and measuring the rope. I mean, logically, that would make sense, right? Well, when we got there, there was like a little plaque and it actually said that no professional tree climbers would climb up the trees. They all had measuring tapes and uh, that's how they measured the tallness of the trees. The first thing I did when I got back was actually upload my introduction to 3D clay printing onto Udemy. I also made it free so you guys are welcome to go and check it out. It just kind of gives you a little bit of background about clay 3D printing, what it involves, and it's actually longer than the one that's on Skillshare. And uh, the plan is to create a lot more content for Udemy and Skillshare in the future. If you guys have anything that you would like to know more about with regards to clay 3D printing, let me know below and I can include this in the courses and the classes that I'll be doing in the future. So I'm very excited for that. And I've been working on that in the background. I've been having a lot of fun printing clay works for the workshops that I want to do. And this has also pushed me to create forms that I wouldn't necessarily create for myself because it might not necessarily be my style, but that doesn't mean someone else might not like it. So the workshops will be, there's either a one day full workshop for one person. So we go through everything from 3D design, beginner 3D design, all the way through to how do you prep the clay, printing with clay. I'm also looking at shorter workshops. So three hours to four hours for one person or two or three people, because I only have one printer. So I can only do one print at a time. And some of the prints take up to two, three, three and a half hours. And it's funny, you could be like, but why don't you print it faster? Because you actually lose the quality of your print. Well, the way that I print it, I lose a lot of quality if I print faster. I like to print a bit slower because I know it gets those curves and those edges perfectly and the clay doesn't warp, which is a really big problem. Clay can warp really easily if you're printing clay too fast, especially if your layer heights are quite high. Like I usually do 1.5 to 2 millimeter layer heights. Then it's really easy for your clay to fall in. And I don't want to have to stand there with a hair dryer every single time and fix a print. I'd actually like the print to run on its own. So that's also what I've been doing, testing some prints without using a hair dryer and kind of pushing the boundaries and seeing how much the clay body can hold before it decides to implode on itself. I also had quite a lot of fun printing mini 3D clay testers. I made about 22 glaze testers. So that covers a whole range of colors and decorative techniques, 
which I think will be more than enough for people to choose from because you don't want to give them like 50 choices because then they don't know what to pick. I haven't had any problems with the printer. We've been working really well together. We kind of found our groove. I've also discovered how not to have any air bubbles where before I'd have like one or two air bubbles, but now the air bubbles are gone. Now it's a quite a long process. We're not going to cover that today, but short and sweet, I do my clay process. And then I think I may have mentioned before where I do run the printer for about half an hour and just do a test print and the pressure builds up in the tank. And then if there are any air bubbles, they usually come out within the first 30 minutes because I run the printer so slowly. I think it's also because my clay is quite wet when I put it into the canister because I soak it in water. So the clay can easily fall in on itself because the clay is wet, but that's why we have the handy hair dryer if that happens. I've also been embracing a lot of imperfection and finding that imperfection is perfection. And since I've kind of changed my mindset on that, I feel like I'm getting a lot further in terms of creating works that I really like. One of the things I did this month to kind of help me with my self-esteem and kind of help my mindset and change it a little in terms of being more positive about what I was doing was to write down some of the things that I'd accomplished in my life, throughout my life, that I thought were pretty amazing. Shush, hearty da. This is a really big moment for me. And as I started doing this, you kind of think to yourself, oh, I did this. Oh, I did that. Oh, I did that. And you realize you're not as dumb as you think you are. You've actually done a few things in your life that were kind of cool. And one of the things that I'd accomplished was when I was 12, I had a brown belt in karate. The only reason I didn't have a black belt was because with karate, when you go to black belt, you have to do contact sport where you actually, before you just kind of fight each other, but you're not allowed to touch each other. But if you want a black belt, you actually literally have to hit each other. And I didn't want the black belt because I didn't actually want to physically harm another human being. So that's why I didn't get my black belt. It's also winter now, so my pots are drying extremely slowly. So I was kind of hoping to have them in the kiln this week but not because the water content is so high in them. They obviously take a lot longer to dry. So as you can see in the back there, some are, you know, not dry because they're obviously a bit darker in color. And uh, the white ones are obviously the ones that are a bit more dry. The print that we're doing for this video today is a print that I actually did a few days ago. I had to reprint it like four times. The first print I did had an air bubble. Why? Because did Hendrin print the first 30 minutes super slowly and do a test print to make sure all the air bubbles were out? Nope. So we did another one. This time it was about 40 minutes in. As I was filming, I kind of turned my back and I went and made myself a little bit of a coffee. And as I came back, I could see the printer was printing, but it was like printing a bit skew. And then I noticed it had sagged. So when I rewatched the video and there it's becoming like super sad and it's just started sagging and the clay kind of fell in on itself and it just wouldn't hold the shape. So yeah, that didn't work. The third print I did, I actually went and changed the 3D design of the pot. I didn't keep the shape the same. I made the angles a little less so that it wouldn't fall in on itself. And I was like, this could work. I was an hour and 40 minutes into the print and I was like, woo, it's gonna hold, I'm excited. I stopped like recording at that moment, went and did something, came back and then found this. Super sad print that also fell in on itself. Now, when this happened, it was about nine o'clock at night and I was like, I'm over this, I'm leaving going home and I'm going to go sleep. So that's what I did. I slept on it. I came back and I was like, cool. Didn't change the design. I was like, it should be fine. But today I'm using my hair dryer. Approximately 30 minutes in, I blasted it with the hair dryer for about two minutes. And then from there consecutively, every 10 to 15 minutes, I used the hair dryer just a little bit and it seemed to help.
was so happy when the piece made it. I was like, finally, try number four. But persistence pays off. You just need to be like, it's fine. Hang in there. Test, retest, find what works. And then, yeah, eventually you will get there. But these vases, you can see them quite a lot with plastic printing, these types of vases. But obviously with plastic, it dries a lot faster and the shapes obviously don't warp as much as if you were using clay. That's why we use the hair dryer, just to make sure that everything stays in place. Thanks so much for joining today, guys. I'll see you next month. I'll be showing you some of my glaze testers, what they look like and talk a little bit more about the workshops and what it involves and also what I'm doing for some of my own artworks. See you guys next time. Bye.